Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas. And uh, people say, well, why are you having it? Christmas is over. Well, uh, I can't think of a better way to end 2020 Amen. than Merry Christmas. Come on, somebody. Y'all, y'all just sitting there like, don't be a COVID patient right now. Amen. Give God praise in here. Hallelujah. It feels good in here today, and God's in this house. God is in this house. I want you to go ahead and look at your neighbor, and because I, I want to keep this going, amen. I want you to say these words. Listen, it's, it's long, but I wrote this down because God gave it to me. Look at your neighbor and say, God is in this place. I feel the Holy Spirit, and I'm not going to miss it. <laughs> God is in this place. Come on. Come on, the rest of you. God is in this place. I feel the Holy Spirit. And I'm not going to miss it today. Amen. Now let's give God a big old Merry Christmas praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, y'all look good. You sound good. And uh, I'm going to quick preach really quick this morning because I'm about to bust up on this stage. Just, uh, my, my, my suit shrunk over the summer. Y'all know what I'm saying? And so, uh, but anyway, man, I want to uh, I want to preach. The, we call this the Why series. Why? I hear this all the time. Why? Why? Why would God do this? And why would God allow that? So I wanted to call this the Why Series. And two weeks ago, I preached a sermon called, Why Did God Choose Mary? Why did God choose Mary? Last Sunday, I preached, Why Did God Choose You? <laughs> why did God choose you? And today, what I want to do, I want to preach on the subject, Why Did God Choose Jesus? Why did God choose Jesus? Y'all think about this. Why did God choose Jesus? Because I started thinking, there's no way, I'm going to be honest with y'all. Can I just be honest with you? I'll take out my heart and be honest with you. There is no way I would put my son on a cross for, for people. Now, y'all can be all religious all you want to. You can sit there with all your religious face or whatever. I'm just telling you what, listen, me, I, I'm just, maybe I am selfish. Call me whatever you want. But me to nail my only son to a cross that people are going to spit on him and cuss him and not be faithful to him and neglect him and, 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 and all that. Listen, the list goes on and on and on. But I'm just sharing my heart with you this morning. I want to thank God publicly for sending his son, Jesus Christ, to die for me. He didn't have to. But he loved me so much, he wanted to. And listen, if you don't appreciate your salvation, I'm telling you, I am happy I'm saved. I am happy I'm not going to hell. Anybody in here glad today that you're not going to hell? That right there is worth a shout. And if you don't shout here, I'm telling you, one day you may shout down there. I'm telling you, it's real. It's real. It's real. It's your God could have chose a thousand. Y'all think about this. A thousand different ways to get us to heaven. He could have. He could have chosen a thousand different ways to get us to heaven. But for some reason, he chose Jesus. He chose Jesus. His one and only begotten son. Well, watch this. Jesus was perfect. <laughs> Jesus was spotless. <laughs> Jesus was sinless. Jesus was innocent. And watch this. Jesus was already in heaven. But for some reason, God looked over at his son, Jesus sitting at the right-hand side of him and said, it's not over. Something's getting ready to take place on earth and I've got to send you to earth. The people are going to die and go to hell if I don't send the right lamb. And I started thinking about why would, why would God do that when he could do a thousand other different things? Jesus got beaten with a cat of nine tails. How many of y'all believe that? I mean, he was beaten, the Bible says, and I believe the Bible. I don't understand all the Bible, but I believe the Bible. He was beaten so bad that he was unrecognizable. You, you could not even look at his face and say, who is that? Who is that? And I started thinking, why would he do that? Why would he get bruised for my iniquities? Why would he get cursed? Why would he die on a cross and put in a borrowed tomb? Not, not a tomb. I, I, God just spoke to me. The reason why he put him in a borrowed tomb, because he, he didn't own it. He, he didn't stay there long. He, he was just passing through. Amen. And so I'm glad I serve a God that, that borrows a tomb and don't stay in the tomb. He stayed in the grave for three days. He got back up on the third day. 
He ascended, watch this, Willie. He ascended back into heaven where he was already sitting before he came to earth. He sat down right when he left. And I, my mind may not run like your mind or your mind may not run like mine, but why would, he, why would God choose Jesus? And I want to give you today three quick reasons why God chose Jesus. And I'm, I'm sure that you got your own reasons and this, that, and the other, but I want to back this up with the Word of God. Why did God choose Jesus? Why did God choose Jesus? Why did God choose Mary? Why did God choose you? Why did God choose Jesus? He could have done a thousand different things. Why did God have to send Jesus, who was perfect, to us? The number one reason why I thought, and I want to lay this at your feet. I'm going to give you three reasons why God chose Jesus. Number one, to express the love of God. Listen to me, to express the love of God. Now, I want you all to lean in. And I want y'all to listen to this because listen, this right here is the game changer. Listen, if you get this first point right, the next two is just going to line up. If you get this first one, how much God loves us. Y'all don't know, it, my salvation means something. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve to go to heaven. But for some reason, God chose Jesus and here's the, because he loved us so much. And I want this, I know, listen, some of you are sitting in the center going, Brian, I know God loves me. Do you really know how much God loves you? Do you really know how much God, I'm trying to get this in your spirit this morning. Because if you get this first one down right, if you know, listen, I, I, I love you, but God agape you. God loves you like nobody else can love you. You may be down in the ditch this morning and God's got supernatural long arms. He'll pull you out. He'll stand you up. How's he going to take you up? Y'all know what I'm talking about? God loves you. Come on, somebody. God loves you. He loves you. Listen, if you can get this one, I finally, finally understand this. And this is why I'm crazy about God. Not because I'm a pastor. They, they come and go. Here's why. One of the only ways, I thought about this, ways God can show me and God can show you how much he truly loves us is by giving us something that he truly loves. Now think about this. The one way God had to show me and you that he really truly loved us is by giving you something that he truly loves. If you watch, if you're giving a gift to somebody and you truly don't love that gift, it, don't, it ain't no sacrifice in giving that gift. But if, you're, if your son is getting ready to be nailed to a cross, that has to be love. That has to be love. The only way that I truly believe after studying the Bible, after reading the Bible and examining my life, the only way God can really show me how much he loves me is by giving me something that he truly loves. That is a gift. That is a gift. One of the greatest verses in the Bible, I hear this, it's a vacation Bible school verse, but I want us today to read this verse. It's called John 3, 16. And I know this may be an elementary sermon to some, but if you get how much God loves you, everything else will change in your life. Everything else will change in your life. John 3, 16. I want us, I want Aaron, he's already got it up there. He's good. But listen to this, John 3, 16. I want us just to take the time today and I pray this gets in your spirit. Let's read this together. Y'all ready? Let's read. For God, that he gave his only begotten son. I don't know if y'all got to this. Let's read this side. Because I want this to get in your spirit. This is more than a Bible verse. This verse was God's verse written to you. Make this personal in your life. For God's a love, Brian. Come on, y'all. For God's a love, Dana. It, watch, it changes everything. When you just don't read it as a verse, but you put your name in the verse. So this time around, what we're going to do, we're going to put your name in that verse. Y'all ready for this? Put your name, for God so loved and put your name there, all right? This makes all the difference in the world. This changed my life. For God, come on, here we go. For God so loved Brian. 
that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have eternal life. How many of y'all received that today in Jesus Christ's name? Come on. How many of y'all received that today? Amen. God said it where he made it so simple. Even I, if I can understand this, please, y'all can too. God says, if you believe that I love you so much <laughs> that I sent my son Jesus into this world to die for you. In other words, you ready? Take your place. Take your place. When, that's why they say when Jesus was on the cross, you was on his mind. Because really, you should have been on the cross. Really, you should have been on the cross to die for your sins. But thank God we got somebody that's a mediator between man and God. His name is Jesus Christ. He says, I love y'all so much. I'm going to ask my son. I love this. My son to leave a heavenly place to go to a hellish place, to die for your nasty sins, die on the cross, be put in a borrowed tomb, get up on the third day, but watch this, I'll be back. He's coming back in Jesus Christ's name. You can't stop him. Somebody say you can't stop him. Yeah, and I love this. I'm not saved. I don't care what anybody says. I've read the Bible and I'm sticking with the story. You're not saved just for a day. Watch this. Y'all lean in. If his blood... It's not enough to save you and keep you. We're all in trouble. We're all in trouble. But I serve a God when he saves, he saves. When he delivers, he delivers. When he sets you free, he sets you free. You're not saved for just a Sunday. You're not saved for just a month or two months or a year. Or watch this, let me go really deep. 10,000 years, you are saved for eternity. Forever. Never. Come on, endeavor, endeavor, endeavor. Watch this, we get each other forever. You say, oh God. I'm just telling you, listen. In Jesus Christ's name, we're saved for eternity. Why did God choose Jesus? To express the love of God. I'm gonna go on, number two. Number two, why did God choose Jesus? Not just to express his love, but number two, God wants to give you a gift. You think about this. God wants to give me and you a gift. Now watch this. So many people miss the Christ in Christmas. Uh. So many people miss the Christ in Christmas. The focus of Christmas, watch this, is not the shopping. Y'all help me this morning. It is not the shopping, but it is the Savior. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is not the shopping. It is the Savior. We, listen, we should be promoting deliverance, not debt. I'm happy this morning. I ain't going to hell. <laughs> listen to this. The measure of our joy. So often we measure our joy. Listen to this. It should not be determined by the gifts under the tree. My joy is because of the gift that died on the tree. Come on, somebody. Yeah, it's not about all the gifts. Under, listen, we're raising our children wrong. When they get up and say, that's all I got? That right there is a B-Ramp butt whipping right there. You're, we're raising our children about the gift under the tree. How much you spend on them? We fight as families. Well, they gave you this and they gave you that and Granny got, got more than them. I get tired of that. Why can't we go back to the basics of Jesus Christ? The greatest gift. I tell you all what we should do next year as a church. God just spoke this to me. Why, why don't we give our, gift, our Christmas gifts to a family that needs it? Oh God, Brian, now I ain't doing my kids like that. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, you are. And listen, I'm just telling y'all. I'm just telling y'all, Jesus Christ, we have focused more about the gift under the tree than we have the gift that died on the tree. When we get back to the gift that died on the tree, I'm telling you, it'll solve a lot of things that's going on under the tree. Come on, somebody. God's presence is better than the presence under the tree. God's presence, hallelujah. I wouldn't take nothing for this morning. I wouldn't take anything for the way we worship God. 
I wouldn't take anything from my redeemer, my salvation. My joy belongs to God. Watch this world can't buy that. Some of the richest people in the world has committed suicide. You know why? They focused on the wrong present. I'm preaching good. (laughs) So listen to me. I want y'all to get this. God has put a gift. His gift. Y'all think about this. God gave us a gift. We don't talk about this much, but God, not only does he express his love to us by sending Jesus, he loves us so much he gave us a gift called the Holy Spirit in us. And I love this. God has put his gift inside of us. But listen to this. Be very careful. Shawana, we had a, we had a, a staff devotion Monday and Shawana, so I stole these notes off Ditto. So y'all give her the props on this. But I told her Monday, right, in the staff meeting, then Joe said, I'm going to use this. So listen, God has put a gift inside of us. It is the most precious gift in the whole wide world. I don't care what anybody says. The, the Holy Ghost is real. The Holy Ghost is real. Hallelujah. The, I get happy when I talk about it. It's real. He lives in me. He's not some cosmic figure that lives out in space. I got to say, Holy Spirit, where are you today? He's in us. God loves us so much. He gave us a gift and he put the Holy Ghost inside of us. I get fired up about that. Be careful. Watch. Be careful how you unwrap. Be careful how you open the gift. And we need to take care of this gift inside of us. I remember when I was a child, my mom would hide my Christmas gifts. She would hide them every year. Well, I got to the age where I was like, I was trying to, I was figuring some stuff out. And so every year, what I would do, when my mama wasn't at home, I I would would tear the house up. I, I would go to the bedroom, look under the bed. I'd look in the closet. If mama left her car out in the driveway, I would find the key that went to the trunk. I would open the trunk, look in, whoo, Jesus Christ. And, and I would put, I'd put it back down really quick, but I would find my gifts. I would find my gifts. I would do anything, watch, to find my gift. I wish we'd get back to like that in the churches. I'll do anything to find the gift of God that is inside of me. I would do anything when they ain't looking, I'm gonna go somewhere and find the gift that God has put inside of me. I remember Mom and dad, and I know we got young kids here, so I'm going to be careful how I do this. But I remember mom and daddy would, would go to bed at nighttime. Well, be real, I had a flashlight. And I remember, don't, don't, don't text me, please. I remember when they'd go to bed, I'd get up and I would crawl. I'm, I'm being honest, I would crawl up in the living room, crawl. And I would get under the tree, Bobby, and I would start looking. Be Brian, Brian. Brian. I wasn't worried about John. I wasn't worried about Melinda. I wasn't worried about my sister Dana. I was only trying to find y'all missing this. My gift. Because my gift had a name on it. Hey! And nobody else could have my gift because my gift is inside of me. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Some of you are trying to find somebody else's gift. Y'all see what I'm saying? You got to find it. You got to search for it. You got to dig for it. I promise you I was not voted in high school most likely to be a pastor. But I'm telling you when God called me at the age of 14. And God didn't base my calling on a marriage. God didn't base my calling on a denomination. God said, Brian, I've got a gift for you. I feel the Holy Ghost. And that gift don't belong to nobody else but Brian Rafferty. And you got to find your gift. You got to search for your gift. And you got to dig for your gift. And watch this. Your name is on that gift. Your name is on that gift. I started out as a teenager. Um, and I, I'm... ADHD, I still like that. I try to work, I'm trying to work on that. But anyway, when I was a kid, mom would take her time. She'd wrap my gift up. It would look really neat and nice. It'd have my name on it. But here, I was the type of kid, I'd go. 
Oh, I mean, I know y'all y'all ain't like it, but I was like, oh my God, it's my gift. And I would rip that paper. I would tear the paper like nobody's business. I would rip it up. And what God spoke into me was this. People, if you're not careful, you're going to try to rip somebody else's gift up. I didn't need a mic. That's a box. But I, dropped, I just dropped the box. <laughs> I just dropped the box. Hallelujah. I'm going to do it again because I didn't get it. Some of you are trying to rip up other people's gifts. Yes, yeah, so, if, you, if you're over 40, you'll get it later. Hallelujah. But my granny, oh, my precious granny, she's with Jesus. She'd always sit down, Mark, and she would get a pair of scissors, Joey. And I was not geared like this. She would sit down and bless the Lord. The Lord gives and the Lord taketh away. And all the grandkids would be like, Granny, open the dang gift. And Granny would sit there. So I'm telling you the truth. She would take her scissors and she would cut it like this. And she'd take her time. And I mean, just beautiful. And it wasn't beautiful back then, but... And Granny would take her time, and she would just cut. Because you know what Granny would do? Granny would use the paper next year. <laughs> you don't know the truth. Granny would use the same paper next year. Granny would take, she would cut it. Oh, she would be so gentle with it. And the kids would be sitting there going, Granny, it would be Christmas next year if you don't hurry up. You know what I'm saying? And Granny would just take her time. Just cherish the moment. And what we as kids were sitting there going, Granny, we're going to open it for you. My point about it is this. Listen to me. Now, I know that may be a silly little illustration. But I promise you, if I took my time, I could save the paper. I could save the gift. So many of you are ripping up your gift that God has given you. So many of you don't realize the treasure that God has put inside of you. And if you'll just take your time, I'm, I'm preaching better, because listen, I am not like this. Haywood always says, Rafferty just takes off running, and when he's running, he's like, where are we going? I only know where I'm going sometimes. And I'm not geared like this a lot of times, but I'm trying. As I, my granny said, wine gets good with age. Somebody help me, that's good preaching right there. We're gonna take communion here in a minute. But listen, take your time and open the gift. Don't rush into tearing it, ripping it apart, being miserable all your life. Take your time to open your gift. Watch this. Your gift with your name on it. Watch this. Y'all can't have my gift. I can't have Brother Willie's gift. I've got a gift. My gift has my name on it. But I've got to be careful how I open my gift. Because if I just start tearing it apart and tearing the paper off of it, it's going to be a mess. But God spoke into me. And he said, tell them to take their time to open their gift. John could have had $1,000. I'm being honest with y'all. He could have had $1,000 under that Christmas tree. And I didn't care. I bypassed it. He said, Brian, you would now. Probably. But here's what I'm saying. If you get that determined, I love y'all, but I've got a gift inside of me. And my gift has my name on it. I can't have Brother Bob, watch this, Brother Bobby's gift is laying hands upon the sick and watching them recover. One of my gifts, Brother Willie, is encouragement. I love encouraging people. I love building people up. I love that. That's one of my gifts. And I feel that one of my gifts also is the spirit of gab. Come on, y'all. I worked hard on this. Y'all, <laughs> the rest of you, this day must be guests here today. I'm just telling y'all, listen, everybody's got a gift. Everybody's got a gift. Everybody's got a gift. Not only does God love you, God has given you a best gift that'll never go away. He's with you. He's in you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He's good. He's God. He's on time. Come on, we're going to take a five-second praise break right there. Come on, Merry Christmas. Open up the gift this morning. Hallelujah. Open up the gift. It's inside of you.
It's inside of you. Don't rip somebody else's gift up. You got a gift, Jenna, with your name on it. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. What type of people are you? Are you a gift ripper? Uh, yes, somebody's honest. Or I pray after today, you start taking your time, opening up the gift with your name on it that God has given you. Here's, God has given you a gift with your name on it. It belongs to you, but be very careful. Watch, be very careful how you open up the gift. Last point and I'm done. <laughs> we still got invitation. Holy Communion. So, third point is this. So we don't have to go to hell. So we don't have to go to hell. Y'all listen to me, okay? There's a lot of doctrines, a lot of theology. A lot of people out there is fussing today on salvation. Can you lose your salvation? How do you get saved? Do, do you got to work for your salvation? Does church attendance have anything to do with your salvation? There's all kinds of doctrines out there. I promise you there are. I've went to school, I've studied this stuff. There's all kinds that watch this. But the Bible says, hallelujah, there's one name. There's one name under heaven that man shall be saved. And that name is Jesus Christ. That name is a name above all other names. Quit complicating church. Quit complicating the gospel. It's all about Jesus. It'll always be about Jesus. There's nothing you can add to Jesus. There's nothing you can take away from Jesus. Jesus is Jesus and he's more than enough. Somebody give him praise in today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So I want you to look at your neighbor and I want you to testify today. I want this to get in your spirit. I want you to look at your neighbor dead up in the eye, six feet apart, social distance. And I want you to look at him telling these words, I'm not going to hell. Tell him again, I'm not going to hell. Say it like you mean it. I'm not going to hell. I want y'all to get that. The only person that will send you to hell is you. Is you. I hear people say all the time about, the, you know, about God and Calvinism and all the isms. Be, watch this, y'all ready? Be careful with the isms. Be careful with the isms. Here's what I know is this. God will save you just as you are. But he refused to leave you as you are because he loves you too much. You should always constantly be changed. You mean to tell me that God wants to send you to hell. Think about this. God wants to send you to hell after he sent his son to die for you. You mean to tell me, I, I asked all my Calvinist friends that. You mean to tell me, God sent his best gift, the price, the, the priceless gift of Jesus to die on a cross, to send you to hell. No way. No, 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 no. If I gave my son, I'd want everybody to be born again, everybody to be saved. Bottom line. And I want y'all to lean in and listen to me. Very, There's a lie that's going on. We got to stop it this morning. You are not too bad to be saved. Yep. I don't care what you did last night. Now listen, sin will separate you from Christ, but he won't release you. Oh God, Hallelujah. I'm just telling y'all, listen to me. God loves the worst of the worst of the worst sinners that you can probably even imagine. Someone who's in the state penitentiary, God loves them as much as he loves you. He sure does. So listen to me. I'm gonna tell you some truth. Here's what Jesus does. Here's what Jesus Christ does. All because of Jesus, I've got three things in my life and we're gonna say these together because I gotta get this in your spirit. All because of Jesus, we, we've got three things. And Aaron, I want you and Casey to put these three things up on the screens. We're going to say them out loud. Go lean in, listen. This is it. I'm almost done, I promise you. That's the second time. All because of Jesus, my past is forgiven. Come on. Come on, y'all. Uh -uh. I hear y'all, we talk about the past. We, we try to remind people about the past, who we were, what went on in our life. Watch this. God don't even know what you're talking about. Hey. He 
said, I have forgiven you. I feel the Holy Ghost. As far as the east is from the west. Buried in the, watch this, I feel the Holy Ghost. Buried in the deepest, the deepest part of the ocean to never, ever, ever be brought up again. I need somebody who's been forgiven of everything to give God a big old praise in here today. Come on. No, no, no. If you've been forgiven, your past is forgiven. I don't care what your mama, your daddy said. I don't care what your uncle says. Everybody, you're forgiven. You are forgiven. Listen to me. God says, I love you so much. When I put my son on that cross, I love this. Because see, what we try to do, we try to remind people about their past. And God says, oh, no, 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 no. When they remind you about your past, all you got to say, hold on just a minute. Is God all knowing? I love doing people like this. They're like, yeah, God's all knowing. I said, well, if he's all knowing and the Bible says he has forgiven me, does he keep bringing it up? No, no. God has forgiven you. The second thing, and I love this. The second thing, God, when he gave his son Jesus, it gave me purpose for living. Listen to me very carefully. You are here on purpose today. I don't care if we're celebrating Easter. I don't care if we're celebrating Christmas. I don't care. Watch this. There is a purpose. Listen, when y'all get this word in y'all spirit, it will change your destiny forever. When you truly act like you're forgiven. Come on. Healing place y'all are here. You know the greatest battle that y'all are going to face? Your past. And in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, your past has been forgiven. Forgiven. And not only that, this is blessing me. This is the way I live, Willie. I've got purpose for today. I've got purpose living today. You Brian, I don't know my purpose in life. Well, if you didn't have purpose and your destiny was done... You wouldn't be here. Y'all understand this stuff, how it's flowing today. Listen to me. Your past is forgiven. <laughs> Amen. I've got purpose for living. And listen, I'm going to hone in on this third gift. because There's a lot of sickness going around right now. A lot of my friends have gone on to be with Jesus Christ during this crazy pandemic. But this third point that I'm giving y'all, this has got to resonate. This has got to stick. This is a game changer. If you get this third point right, it changes everything. I know that we love each other. I know there's people out there that are sick, but my destination, my home is heaven. I'm going to heaven. You're going to heaven. I believe that. You know, they say you can always find the true person on their deathbed. I believe that. The true you is when it comes dying time, the true you will speak up. Because all of a sudden, all the money that you have made in your life really don't matter. Yeah. All the alphabet that you've got in front of your name really don't matter. Who liked you and who did not like you really don't matter. When it comes dying time, when it comes time going home, going to heaven, I want y'all to lean in and listen. The real you will show up. I've seen more on a deathbed than I've seen people who are alive sitting in church for 50 years. That's why I preached the sermon before. What if graveyards could preach? What if graveyards could preach? And I'm just telling you, listen to me. Your past is forgiven. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on. I have purpose for living. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. And I have a home in heaven. I believe that. I believe that. Now listen, I understand we, we're emotional people. But our home is in heaven. I, I stand on that word of God right there. I, I put God to the test right there. My home is in heaven. How many of y'all know life's short? How come it takes a funeral for us to say that? How come we don't live like we're living a short life? Hmm. How come we don't live on purpose? 
How come we pay more attention to the past than we do the present? And when Satan tries to stand up and make you say, well, you know what you did last night. You know what you did last summer. You know, that's a show, a movie. When Satan tries to remind you of your past, you remind him of his future where he's going. Amen. He's going to hell. He is in hell. You remind him of that. And can I tell y'all a secret? Praise him. Won't you guys to come? How many, how many of y'all, before I go into this, how many of y'all really want to go to heaven? I want you to raise your hand. I'm talking right. Listen, because I'm going to do something here. Just, you really, really, really want to go to heaven. Really, 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 really want to go to heaven. Raise your hands. All right, that's good. How, how many of you in here are sitting in here? Because I believe there's lost people here today. I sure do. Every sermon I preach, I preach like everyone y'all lost. That'd make you preach different. It'll make you live different. How many of y'all really want to go to hell? Raise your hand if you really, if you really want to go to hell. All right, that's nobody. So here's the deal. Y'all ready? I got you. You need to change that because you're going to one another. And I'm telling y'all, the way this world is going, you say, Brian, it's just a prophecy. You can call it whatever you want to call it. This world is in bad shape. And not only did Brother Terry and Connor blow the shofars this morning. Y'all listen to me. I feel the Holy Spirit. One day, there's going to be a universal horn that's going to go off. And watch this. When, when that horn sounds and all you see is a pile of clothes, you're in trouble. You are in trouble. So if you're under my teaching, under this preaching today, if you're watching on Facebook or if you're at the Tyler County Detention wherever you may be, Watch already, please don't die and go to hell. You say, Brian, I'm saved. Do you act it? Do you know it? Is there fruit in your life? Is there evidence of Christ in your life? Are you a light bulb or are you a light shade? What are you in your life? Are you bearing fruit in your life? Are you born again? Do you know him? Do you know him? Because you can't act like hell and go to heaven. You can't. I'm preaching better than y'all acting. Can't do it. Saved people act saved. Lost people act lost. <laughs> so I just wonder if this pandemic goes on another year. If this pandemic goes on another year, are we just going to keep missing church? We have paid more attention. I'm sorry. Y'all get mad at me all you want to. I'm going to preach the word. I got one chance to preach the word of God. Today may be my last sermon. But I'm going to go out with a shout today. The grave is empty. Jesus Christ is in heaven. We got an open heaven over this church. And I'm telling you greater things are coming. But watch this. I'm not going to wait for the later when I'm doing it right now. Y'all help me. Satan, the government wants to shut the churches. I know what I'm talking about. If it were to last another year, where are you at spiritually? I'm not making light of it, but I know truth. We better, y'all watch. You better make your mind up today. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't, don't be texting me. Don't be doing no hater mail. Because I'll swipe to the left and I'll delete you in Jesus' name. But I'm telling y'all, listen to me. The pandemic's out there. But who are you listening to more? The word of God? Or the statistics of the world? You better make your mind. Watch, either Jesus is real. Or we're all wasting our time this morning. I just want to know. Where you're at today. I want to know. Do you love Jesus Christ today? There's one thing. Here's the secret. There's one requirement for accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And I watch this. By the way. I don't believe everybody in here is saved. I think that's what's wrong with the church. They just. They think everybody's saved. I, I agree with Dr. Billy Graham. I think probably 75% of your membership's lost. I know it's tough. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Y'all watch. 
is this world, is this what you're doing, the way you're acting, what's going on in your life right now? Is it, is that it? You mean to tell me we have figured out Jesus Christ? There's more. There's one requirement, one requirement for accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Y'all know what that is? Here it is, you ready? It's called humility. Humility. <laughs> Let me give you the definition for humility. Humility says you are God and I am not. Humility says, God, you can save me. I can't save myself. Whoa. Humility says, God, you can forgive me. I can't forgive myself. Humility says, God, you can change me from the inside out. God, I can't change myself. See, watch, I hear it all the time. People say, well, I've got to change before I come in. I got to do this and I got to do that. Watch this. No, no, no. You can't do it on your own. Listen, you can't change your bad self by yourself. Watch this. You can't, you can't save yourself. So here's what I'm asking us to do today. I want us to humble ourselves. I want us to humble ourselves today and say, God, you're God and I am not. Some of you are trying to fix your family. Let God fix your family. Some of you are staying up late at night. You're worried to death about everything that's going on in this world. I wish we would talk about God more than we talk about COVID. We got the answer, Joey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He lives in me. I should be the answer. I say, you know what? I know you got a lot going on, but there's somebody inside of me. He don't get sick. He don't sleep. (laughs) He never leaves me. He's here all the time. Humility. You know what's going to send people to hell? Y'all ready? Pride. Pride. You'll never see me bow down. You'll never see me do that. Oh, one day I will. Oh, one day I will. But you may be in the wrong line. So in Jesus Christ's name, y'all ready? Y'all stand to your feet. I'm praying today (laughs) that you'll you'll shine. I'm praying today that, you know what, we would, I I told someone this the other day, I said, God's trying to demask us. And the government's trying to mask us. Y'all get that later. And listen. It's it's out there. It's out there. It's out there. We're going to do all that we can to fight this. But I'm telling y'all in Jesus Christ's name, I've made my mind up. I've made my mind up that God's all we need. He's more than enough. When he sent Jesus Christ to die for me, he died for me. He lives inside of me. He's coming back for me. He's greater than anything I'm up against right now. If God can't do it, we're all in trouble. Amen. We're all in trouble. So how? Humility. Why did God choose Jesus? To express the love of God. To express the love of God. God loves you. God loves me. To give you a gift. Watch this, y'all ready? Your gift has your name on it. Make sure you open your gift and to save you from going to hell. Aren't you glad (laughs) that you're not going to hell? So we're gonna open this altar up. You may be here today. You may not even know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. I'm gonna ask you to come to this altar. I'm gonna ask you to give your heart to Jesus Christ. Listen, I say this every Sunday, I have to. You don't have to get saved 59,000 times. Jesus Christ died once and once for all. If his blood don't cover you the first time, it ain't gonna cover you the hundredth time. His blood is enough, amen? So in Jesus Christ's name, this altar's open. Come, open that gift up today. Let God completely into your life today. Let him search you. Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, I thank you for this church. I believe, we believe in the name of Jesus. 
So God, right now, I know your word went forward. And God, I know it's not going to come backwards. <laughs> God, I pray to God that, Lord, we heard the word. We, we love the word. And God, you continue to open that heaven up. Lord, for somebody here today that does not know you, save them. Right now, save them. Woo them to this altar. And God, we love you in this place. Have your way. I pray this prayer believing all things are possible with you. In Jesus' name. And all God's people say it.